Hey everybody, uh, we're going to do a quick little Stata tutorial here. Uh, no econometrics involved, just dealing with graphs. So obviously real important when you're analyzing data, especially when you're presenting results, writing reports, uh, etc. You want your graphs to be readable uh, and to tell the story that you're trying to tell. Uh, so we're going to walk through a real quick example here. We're going to bring in some uh, example data, time series daily data from the NASDAQ. Uh, and we'll use that Fred use command, right? So we're going to uh, download data right into Stata from the Federal Reserve Economic Database. Uh, if you haven't already, right, you're going to need to type in that SSC install command, Fred use, and that'll uh, install this command that's not already part of uh, the default Stata. I've already got it, and it should tell me uh, that that is the case. Uh, and then, uh, once again, previous video on this, but if you want to uh, go get data from that Fred website. You need to know the code that they use uh, to get the, the right variable. Uh, in this case, we are going to get the daily level of the NASDAQ index. We'll use Fred use in a S D A Q C O M. So the NASDAQ composite index. And we should see on the upper right, there it is. Uh, and we also have that date variable automatically generated. Uh, so always do a quick a quick browse of your data. Uh, so we have our text date, we have our numerical date, uh, observations going all the way back to 1971. And we do see uh, a fair number of missing observations here in the sample. Uh, so those are gonna be non-trading days, right? But if we start to do any analysis with the data, that can be a problem. Um, and we're not gonna try to impute what those values should be um, so we'll take the tack of just uh, eliminating those missing observations before we go any farther. So we'll just drop everything if that NASDAQ index is missing. So in state of that means equal, equal, dot. Don't forget that second equal sign. So we have 412 of those observations uh, that have been eliminated. Um, for the purposes of generating graphs, right, I would go ahead and use that date uh, variable so obviously we can see the calendar date uh, when different events occurred for the purposes of generating uh, variables differences lags returns etc i always prefer just to to generate a new uh, trend indicator so i'll generate a new variable call it t equal to underscore little n uh, and then i will tell stated that that is my time series identifier so ts set t and we're just going to generate, uh, again, this is just for the purposes of getting some variables to create some, some graphs that tell a little story here. Uh, we'll generate the return on NASDAQ, so R in AS. Uh, and that'll be equal to the, the difference from one day to the next. So D dot NASDAQ com uh, divided by the one period lag, L dot NASDAQ Q. C-O-M. Uh, so now we have uh, kind of these two variables to deal with, and it might be useful to show them uh, kind of as they change over time, side by side, and maybe relative to their, their frequency histograms as well. Right? Uh, and since we are going to be doing time series graphs, I would recommend going ahead and swapping out our time series variable. So use that TS set command again, and instead of using date, right, which uh, when it appears in red, that means Stata is reading it as uh, text. I don't, won't be able to, to utilize it numerically. We'll use this date in variable. Uh, and there's, again, see a previous video on uh, specifically dealing with dates, formatting it, but this will be just fine for the purposes of, of generating some graphs. So let's do a simple TS line graph for the level of the NASDAQ. And if I hit enter now, the graph's going to come up, and that'll be that'll be just fine. Um, but what I'm going to do in addition is use the name command, or I should say the name option within that graphing command. So I'm going to call this graph the level. It's the level of the NASDAQ index as opposed to the change or the, or the return. And we should see the graph pop up, and there it is. And we have our our dates uh, along here, so everything looks just fine. And that's been put into Stata's memory, so we can call that back up. We'll do the same thing for the
the return, so R and AS, our generated return variable, and we'll also append that naming option. So we'll call this graph return, again, you can call it whatever you want, uh, and there we see our, our volatility. Uh, that's where this is going to lead to when we start to, to think about that, uh, but just for the purposes of the visualization here, so that's the change, percentage change one day versus another. Uh, and then let's uh, let's get two more graphs here. Let's generate the histogram uh, for each of these. And let's also name those. So this is the histogram for the uh, NASDAQ level. Uh, so we'll call this hist NAS. Not super creative here. And there it is. We see that uh, positive skew, long right-hand tail. And then let's do the same thing. Let's call up the, the command again, and let's just change the name to hist-ret, and we'll apply that histogram command to the NASDAQ return. And there we go. So uh, roughly our symmetric bell-shaped curve there. Uh, so, obviously, straightforward, we can grab all those graphs individually, but wouldn't it be nice if we could put them all together and see them all at one time? So the command that we want to add to this once we have those graphs created and named, put into memory, is exactly what you think it would be. We want to combine the graph, so we're going to use the command graph combine, and then we just list out the names of the graphs. Uh, the order in which we type these will determine uh, their positioning uh, eventually on the on the page. Uh, so we'll start with the level and the return, uh, and then we'll do the histogram. So the histogram of the level, and then the histogram of the return. And then we can decide how we want to organize these. So you've got four graphs. Makes a lot of sense to put into a little two by two uh, matrix of graphs. So we're going to have two columns. So CL, COL, parentheses two. Uh, and two rows, so row in parentheses two. And we should see, there it is, uh, our four graphs. So we have the time series plots on top and then the associated histograms on bottom. Uh, before we get uh, too happy with ourselves, everything looks great, uh, but obviously the, uh, the labeling of that X axis here is not great. Uh, the uh, the dates in the, each of the tick marks here are kind of merging into one another, and obviously we can't read those. So we're going to need to edit that. Uh, so let's go to the Start the Graph Editor up here, and we can just select that axis. And there's lots of things we can do here, but the, the easiest way to handle this is go down to Label Properties, uh, and we just want to adjust the size. Um, and Took me well. It just took me one one try to figure this out. Uh, that this is not font size, right? So if we if we type in kind of a reasonable font size, say uh, ten, that was not helpful. Right? That's uh, that's too big, right? So let's try that again. And if we play around with it a little bit, obviously it depends on how many graphs you have combined, what size is going to be appropriate. If we put in a size two, okay. Now that looks that looks pretty good, right? So we'll hit OK there. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing on the, the second time series graph. So label properties, size 2, apply. Oops, apply up here. OK, OK. Now we got something that we could uh, copy and paste into a document and, again, make part of our of our little story. So as always, there's a lot more to uh, to what we can do here, but that should get you started. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comment, and we'll follow this up with analysis of that volatility versus level with an arch-garch uh, sequence of models. So we'll see you then. Thanks a lot.